Well, that's a good question. I'm not real sure what made me want to be an archaeologist. I've always liked old things. I've always liked archaeology. I've always thought the whole study of, of the past was interesting. But I went into the sciences and became a biologist and a chemist. And one of my hobbies was going into caves. And I started going into caves when I was actually in high school and exploring them and mapping them. And I went on expeditions and I did lots of caving related things. Then one day I got hooked up with an archeologist who was working in a cave in Guatemala and he needed a caver to go and work on some of the exploration and mapping. And well, I got dragged into that. And it was like, okay, well, you know, this is fun. This is like going caving elsewhere. And we went, we mapped and we explored and we did all the fun stuff. And all this archeology span was there and it's really neat archeology. span And I was looking at the archeology span going, wow, this is really neat stuff. I want to know more about this. I mean, biology and chemistry is nice, but archaeology is really interesting. I really like that a lot. And so I kind of fell into it, and I've been doing cave archaeology now for 22 years, working on projects. Pretty much every year I'm in Mexico or Central America, and I've learned a lot of archaeology. <laughs> There's caves all over, and all over the world, people used caves for various things. I kind of got drawn into the whole Maya thing because that's where I got an opportunity to go and work in Guatemala. It was, hey, you want to come down to Guatemala and work for a month? And I was like, hmm, I've never been to Guatemala. Why not? And I got in. I started learning more about the Maya and the culture, the history, the archaeology, and actually also the way the Maya actually used caves and I was really sucked into it and it just became a real real passion of mine. The Maya used caves in a lot of different ways. They, to the Maya the underworld was a very powerful place. It was dark, it was foreboding, there were scary things there, there were dead people there, there were monsters there. Everything the, the cave represented the earth monster, the mother earth. It's where everything came from. The power came from the cave. The clouds that brought the rain came from the caves. Everything revolved around the caves. And they would go there, they would do ceremonies there. They would do rain ceremonies. They would do ceremonies for just about everything you can imagine. And all of these were done in caves. They would just focus on these caves. And you have to remember, caves are dark. It's not like Hollywood where they just go strolling around. They had to go in there with torches, and they were scary places because if you've ever been anywhere with just a candle, you know you don't see a lot. And you can't see very far away. And so the caves were, they were drawn to them, but they were also very afraid of them. And they did lots of really interesting ritual. They would bring food in. They would bring matates and prepare ritual food. They would bring captives in and sacrifice them. They would bring their dead relatives in and bury them in caves. They would burn incense. They would build fires. They would turn these caves into really smoky, really nasty places. I've been in a lot of cave ceremonies and it's just thick smoke and you can't see anything and it's just candlelight or torchlight. And so it was just a really power, powerful place. Well, Noctanisha is really special. Not only it was the first Maya site that I worked at, but it's also really one of the most spectacular simply because of the drawings. Really, most of the sites I've worked at are my favorite. I really like them all. Um, caves like Maya sites, every one of them is different. Um, some have lots of ceramics, some have lots of bones. Not many of them have drawings, but Noctanisha does. They're all really special. I'd seen photos of the drawings in the past, and I knew that, that they were there, and it was just really exciting. You walk into the cave, and you're immediately in this huge chamber, and it's bigger than, bigger than an amphitheater. It's you know football stadium-sized chamber with stalactites hanging down and stalagmites growing up, and the Maya had built walls and retaining walls around the side. There was a large flat area where people could congregate. And 
you work your way through this huge chamber that's lit by this big entrance and you get back to the back and there's a very small entrance that you go through into the rest of the cave where it becomes totally dark and you climb down and then you walk through probably five six hundred meters of cave before you get to the first drawings and then suddenly on the white walls of the cave are these drawings that are done in charcoal and they're just incredibly detailed done with a very very fine brush and it's just really awe-inspiring but probably one of my neat is it's kind of a combination of my neatest find and my most stressful Indiana Jones kind of moment. We were in Noctunish and we were in a new part of the cave that we were the first people who had been there in probably 1200 years. Nobody else had been there. There were just hundreds and hundreds of Maya footprints everywhere, bare footprints through this cave and we were kind of tiptoeing around them so we didn't disturb them. We found new, new drawings on the wall, on one of the walls that had never been seen before and we were wandering around through this, trying to avoid the trails where the Maya had walked. And I saw in this, this slope of flowstone where the Maya had cut steps leading up into this little bitty opening that was only about this big. And so I real carefully climbed up there and it was slick and I didn't want to slip and fall. I climbed up there real carefully. And just as I climbed up there, I got ready to, to squeeze through this little hole at the top and my light went out. Now here I am, I'm in total darkness. This is like darker than just closing your eyes. This is total darkness and I'm there by myself because my friend had gone off and looking at some other areas. I'm kind of laying there on my stomach with my head in this hole going, hmm, well this is interesting, uh, now what am I gonna do? So I start fiddling with my light and I get it to come on again. And I shine my light around and there's a little room in front of me that's about 30 feet in diameter and about six feet high. And in the middle of the room is this altar that the Maya had built and they had taken cave formations, stalactites that hang down from the ceiling and they'd broken them off and they had stood them up behind this altar and I was facing this altar. It was about that wide and about that high with these stalactites that were about this high standing up there behind it and it was just framed perfectly in my light and it was just like wow <laughs> cave archaeology is really different than just regular archaeology regular archaeology you go out and you excavate at sites there's big pyramids and little house mounds and you dig in the dirt and you screen stuff and you work really hard and to be honest, there's lots of sunshine, there's lots of bugs, you get rained on. Um, if it's hot and humid, you sweat. It's just really miserable doing archeology span work. Now caves, on the other hand, caves are much, much nicer. They're cool, they're dark, eh, they're a little scary, but you know, you, you kind of get used to it after a while. Much more pleasant place to work. 